Welcome to the second episode of Series 26, everyone. This series, we're learning about Genesis, Skyjacks, and the world of Sphere from none other than our own network overlord and all-around great guy, James D'Amato. For announcements, Courier's Call has fully funded the day it launched last week. Congratulations to that whole cast and crew. There's still time to get it on the campaign, however, and help them get to new heights and unlock those stretch goals. So heed the call and courier yourself over to the show notes to find the link to the Kickstarter. Also, I believe we're in the final days of the special Pod Chaser Reviews for Good campaign. From now until the end of Thursday, if you leave a review for our show or even for individual episodes, Podchaser will donate 25 cents to Meals on Wheels to help folks affected by everything that's going on in the world right now. If we reply to your reviews, that doubles the amount donated. And to sweeten the pot, I will be matching the donations for every new review we get from now until the end of that campaign. So don't forget to head over to podchaser.charactercreationcast.com to be redirected right to our Podchaser page. And that's it for announcements this week. We don't have a review to read because we do not have Amelia here. But how about we get to the show? and meet these amazing people we ended up making with James. Enjoy. Last episode of Character Creation Cast, Amelia was creating an aristocrat on a mission to find their one true love. James was creating a ghost of a famous figure from history with the desire to mentor another. And I was creating a fallen angel bent on revenge against those who wronged them. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. Yeah, I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to tie this into some of uh, the concepts that freelancers that we've hired uh, have created uh, and I'm trying to see if anything feels really appropriate. I am going to be a ghost of someone from the liquid swords monastery. Um, yes. So for those that don't know, the Liquid Swords Monastery uh, is a setting supplement for Skyjacks that was created by James Mendez Hodes. Uh, it is uh, because music was like the core inspiration for Spear at the start through the Decemberists, uh, Mendez decided to expand out what that discography could actually cover. Uh, and so he created a, a bit of the setting uh, inspired by the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, uh, so, and Chinese mythology. Uh, so the liquid swords live, uh, on top of a massive cryo volcano and they study water. Uh, they mm. study water through science. They study it through magic and poetry and philosophy and in as many myriad ways as it possibly can be studied. Uh, liquid swords monks, uh, Ha, do study martial arts, but they also study rhetoric and diplomacy, strategy, poetry, uh, physical movement, all sorts of different things. And they dis, uh, deploy scholars throughout the world uh, to consult uh, different uh, wealthy and powerful people so that they can bring back money to keep the monastery going. Their ultimate goal is to restore harmony, uh, or at least the goal of some of the monks, because there are so many different splintered factions within the Liquid Swords. It can hardly be said the group has a solitary goal, but at least some of them wish to restore the harmony between humanity and water. Hmm. They're very cool. 
Let's see here. So now we've got to pick careers and careers mm. are analogous to your class. Uh, so if you're familiar with D&D, you know, this is more your job and that'll determine what class skills you have. So with the, the liquid sword traveler, that was one of the first ones that stood out to me when I looked at the careers uh, before we actually even got into the liquid sword uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. Um are they, it looks like they have uh, brawl and melee. Yes. Because um, I'm thinking this, this character is uh, kind of on a mission um, to do some damage somewhere. Interesting. Okay, so uh, if your character was a member of the Liquid Swords, which they very well could be, uh, mm -hmm. they would, a, a traveler essentially trains at the monastery and they're kind of like mid-level bureaucrats. Uh, you would have uh, the, the wise... I actually don't know if they're called masters in James's lore. I'll, I'll have to look that up. But you have uh, kind of the central philosophers uh, that teach different disciplines at the monastery itself. Uh, they usually stay put and they can live pretty comfortable lives just teaching their philosophy and skills to younger students. Uh, there are plenty of younger students who all they do all day is train or work or do menial tasks, sort of working their way up within the organization. And the travelers are uh, folks who have acquired some skill basically enough skill to be dangerous uh, that the their teachers send them out into the world uh, to do things on behalf of the school. Sometimes it is, you know, uh, the, these rich people have hired us as bodyguards or consulting sorcerers. Uh, so we need to go out and do what these people say so that we can get paid and keep the school going. Uh, sometimes they're going out literally to deliver messages from the monastery to other monks who have been placed around sphere. Sometimes they're looking for hidden artifacts or information or whatnot. Uh, so if you're a traveler, you have received training from the liquid swords. You are mm -hmm. part of the school and you're currently working for the school. Okay. Interesting. I have no plan at all, but I just really want to be a necromancer. I, mean, I figured. <laughs> well, we only have one necromancer in the setting so far, so a second one would be interesting. We'll see what happens. So what's the difference between brawl and melee? Melee is with weapons and brawl is with your fists. Uh, there we go. I want a little bit more finesse in my combat. What are you thinking, James? I am going with wanderer. Wandering ghost. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once we pick our career, then we could just select some skills uh, yes. that give you one free rank in those skills. Yeah. Yeah. Every career will come with one free rank and four separate skills. Um, and that will make it easier to buy certain things. Uh, you know, with your start starting XP, you can go, you can decide how you want to invest things in different ways, but uh, the higher your core stats are, your core characteristics, which we'll get to in a second, and your skills, uh, the better dice you'll be using for certain checks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for my skills, my for my career skills, I picked coercion, discipline, knowledge, and knowledge forbidden. Nice. I went with um, athletics, charm, melee, and star watching. Oh, interesting. I went with arcana, knowledge adventuring, star watching, and vigilance. Very nice. Uh, so star watching, uh, because that is a Skyjacks thing. Um, mm -hmm. In actual maritime history, people used to use the stars to navigate the seas before mm -hmm. we really had robust ways of pinpointing where people were on the planet. Uh, people would have to figure out based on their position and the star's position where they were in the world. In the world of Sphere, most of the stars have fallen from the sky. Mm. Um, so there are like six stars. So you really have to watch very carefully to figure out where you are. But also uh, the stars and their movement have a dramatic impact on what happens on the planet of Sphere. So if somebody 
tracks the movements of the stars carefully enough and understands how they move uh, intuitively enough, they can actually predict certain things about the future. Uh, mm. Like I said earlier, seasons flow wildly, completely out of order, and some would even say randomly. A good star watcher will know when the seasons are going to change. Mm. They'll be able to tell uh, what the weather is going to be like, uh, and they may even be able to make important divinations uh, about what is going to happen to them on a day-to-day basis. Nice. Yeah, that kind of that that pretty much tracks with uh, what I was thinking about it. So that's awesome. Okay. Great. So next up, we've got character uh, uh, characteristics. Um, if you look at uh, sort of towards the bottom of your sheet on Genesis Emporium, you will see that you've got experience points to spend. Uh, straight from character creation, uh, this system runs on experience. Mm-hmm. So everything that we do when we add skills, talents, and characteristics uh, will affect the number of experience points that you have available which this is really going to determine what you're good at and what the primary things we anticipate your character to do in a given adventure. Um, Characteristics are the most important thing at character creation because you can only spend a a certain amount of your XP on uh, on characteristics at character creation, and you will not be able to just spend them up later on in the game. Hmm. The only way to increase them after character creation is going to be uh, actually completing a talent tree, which ends with increasing one of your characteristics. Oh, wow. I do remember this from when we did Star Wars, yeah, too. It, it, looks, it, was... it looks the same, too, the the different uh, stats, too. So that, that really helps. Uh, if you've listened to our Star Wars episodes, um, it's the, the brawn, agility, intellect, cunning, willpower, and presence. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how do we increase these in here? Though? Okay, there's a, so looks like there's a little gear. Oh, there's a little there's, gear. Yeah, there's a little gear icon. Found it. Found it. Well, actually, let me look at my skills and see what they go off of here So it looks like That's probably the smart thing to, to do. go from one to two, it takes 20 experience. To go from two to three, it takes 30. And I'm guessing three to four is 40, and it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. So you can really spend a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you can. Not careful. You can be like, oh, well, I'm done, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so I started with 80 XP um, right off the bat. Um, and my brawn started at three, agility two, one for intellect, cunning, and willpower, and three for presence. So I, I can see where this character's kind of strong. And I guess if you look at the skills, it tells you in parentheses uh, which characteristic is attached to each skill, right? Yes, it does. Yep. Uh, so when I build characters, I, I think we mentioned it earlier, but when I build characters using Genesis, I always use Genesis Emporium. Uh, this is a tool that was made by fans of the Genesis system. Uh, Sky Jedi, who actually uh, is a fan of the campaign podcast. Um, I believe they've moved on to doing uh, other coding projects, um, but what they created in this is extremely helpful. Mm-hmm. Oh, they made um, one of the really good dice rollers too that I've always used for Genesis too. Yeah, um, they, they've they've made a lot of cool stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. So a big thanks to Sky Jedi uh, that just makes doing this so much easier. Interesting. There's a lot of good options here. Yep. Uh, and I will also point out while you are doing this with skills, uh, you also have talents at the very bottom of the page. Um, so those talents are going to, uh, they, they'd be something if you have the Genesis core book on you, um, that they'll be explained in more detail, but they're kind of like feats from D and D where they provide unique special abilities um, Mm -hmm. as opposed to increasing your skills and your uh, characteristics is just going to increase the dice pool that you use to roll. Mm. I think if you're starting off and you don't like mechanically heavy systems, you don't really need to engage with talents that much, uh, especially for starting characters, what you do with your skills and your characteristics are going to be more important for what you do, you know, day to day in the game. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, interesting. I, well, I'm looking at the talent list uh, for my character here, and the first one is Undaunted. Though your wings have been clipped, your body remembers what it was. You can restore your connection to the divine by rebuilding your wings with angel feathers. They yes. will help you see truths about yourself that were lost or forgotten. They do not need to be yours. They just need to be a piece of divinity. That's amazing. Yep, and that is one of the primary character journeys for Gable, one of the main characters on campaign. Um, oh, nice. Gable collects angel feathers, and that allows them to restore memories they had of of being an angel and serving in the sovereign's court. Uh, which uh, for Gable, uh, you know, b- brings uh, to light a lot of troubling things about their past. Mm-hmm. Oh. I spent most of mine just playing around with my characteristics and then making skills slightly higher. It's not very exciting to read off aloud. <laughs> just trust me i did a great job everyone i mean <laughs> we I, like we should, probably should go through some of uh the yeah. characteristics <laughs> that you got but uh mm-hmm. i'm just well what's important is that my brawn is at one so oh, that's you how go. you know it's an amelia character it's not good at fighting i guess i'm the tank of the the party that checks out <laughs> i don't know if i because i've got 30 xp left um, I bought two points of intellect to push it from one to three. Um, cause I'd so, like I mean, to... you could go and increase some skills. I can. Because I think it's 10 to buy a non-career skill, and then it's five. I think it, it changes depending on how high the skill is, actually. Right, yeah, I think it's five times what you're raising it to, yeah. plus five if it's not a career skill, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. And can you can you buy other talents? Uh, you can buy talents. Yes. If you go down to the bottom, there'll be a box that says talents. If you click on that, it'll show you all the ones that are currently available to your character. Mm, Interesting. Uh, since I don't know what any of these mean, maybe I can just click on one that sounds cool. (laughs) I'm trying to build, bring up the, uh, core rule book so that we can look into some of that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Definitely going to get that. That rules. I usually don't get talents because I can't remember that I have them. Oh. So they're not really, I, I mean, there are good ones and like there are some that are very helpful to have, but I never remember that I have them. So it's not worth spending the XP on a thing that you never use because you forget <laughs> that you have it. I could get better at playing the game, but that's not the route that I choose to take. Ooh, I mean, that's, tempted. that's certainly an option. Very tempted to take duelist. It is a popular one. I think at uh-huh. least two characters have duelist. Proper upbringing. Interesting. Ooh. <laughs> you fancy. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to take um, Perry. There you go. I, I, oh, I just happened to open the book exactly to that page, too. Nice. So if I take Perry, that's only five experience to buy Perry. Now I want to buy another talent. <laughs> Come on, I'm addicted to talents. It's okay. Brian, you have to stop. I don't have a problem. I can stop <laughs> being awesome anytime I want. But why would you want to? <laughs> da, 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 da. I think I always feel like talents are the easier thing to add on later, too. Yeah, t- talents are. Like, they, they start out remarkably cheap. I mean, if you really want to progress through a talent tree, you might want to invest in some of the roots of that. Uh to start out with, but uh, it, it's really up to you. There's no right way to play mm-hmm. this game. Um, I, I, I think talents are where the real power game lives. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, a character who is not invested in talents, uh, it, you know, they're not going to be behind the rest of the party. Yeah. I think that, that Ryan just proves how we make characters though because you always have that little bit more power gamey tendency than i do i do um i mean it's from your background yeah you know, from palladium but... <laughs> uh you know the the good old uh palladium heroes unlimited system mm-hmm. uh one of our favorites uh-huh <laughs> it's it's still fun <laughs> I mean, honestly, those episodes were some of my favorites. They are. They were so much fun to do. They were. When Jeff and John's just started making up rules just to <laughs> see if I would believe them or not. Uh-huh. Ooh, I could buy a single rank of... Ooh, do I want to, though? Hmm. Maybe. 
<laughs> this is the exciting part of the show. I know. It's like, do I want to do this? Maybe. I like that we always treat it like it's so high stakes, too. Like, oh, no, should I pick this? Should I not pick it? And then we never do anything with any of these characters. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It, I mean, it's important. You could. You don't <laughs> uh-huh. know. You might be invited to one of these games one day. And Maybe. Yeah. You'll need to bust. You'll like have the character already made, and if you mm-hmm. made the wrong choice, that'll ruin it. It'll ruin everything. Right? Everything will be over forever. Uh-huh. Are you sure you didn't invite us here just to like make NPCs for you? <laughs> uh, based on the NPCs that are in front of me, one hundred percent. I am sure that I did not do that. Ouch. I mean, if you think We're about it, if you think about it, all the characters we make on the show are NPCs. I mean, that's, that's true. true. <laughs> You're not playing. Oh, that made me really sad. Well, oh, uh, they have so much potential that they never live up to. I mean, on the other hand, character creation is playing the game. So therefore, they are PCs. Who was it? Was it Grant that was like, yeah, but then you don't get your dirty game all over them? That's true. Hmm. All right, I mm, no, I don't want that one. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna rake up one skill somewhere, and it's gonna be great. <laughs> it's gonna be the perfect skill too. It's gonna be the perfect skill. You're gonna need it, and then there it will be. You know what? I'm gonna rake up two skills that are my class skills. Bold choice. Okay, I I think I'm good. I uh, I added a rank in medicine and perception. Ooh. And um, in, in addition to parry, I also chose swift, which lets me go through like difficult terrain as if it was not difficult. Um, kind of highlighting the the otherworldly, um, you know, aspects of being a fallen angel. I like it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what matters. <laughs> hey, that's role playing. You gotta do what you like. Uh huh. All right, how are you two doing? I'm doing great. I've been done for a while. Yeah, I'm, I I'm done as well. Worry about talents. I guess the the person that has the least experience took the longest. Imagine that. What Weird. a surprise! Weird. <laughs> um, I bumped up a couple of my characteristics, so I have brawn at one, agility at two, intellect at three, cunning at two, willpower at three, and presence at three. Ah, uh, wow! I am. The same, I believe. Uh, brawn one, agility two, intellect three, cunning two, willpower three, presence three. Wow. Nailed it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, let's see. For my skills, I have cool, discipline, medicine, uh, perception, uh, divine, scroll back up, coercion, knowledge, and knowledge forbidden. Mm-hmm. I started with knowledge forbidden as well as a fallen. Yeah, I think I started with that one, um, but I put it up to it too. Ooh, fancy. Oh, I put Star Watching up to it too as well. Nice. Mm-hmm. Got to be good at where you come from. That's fair. <laughs> I'm from the sky, so I know about the sky. Exactly. <laughs> That's how it works, right? I think so. Mm-hmm. James, did you pick any talents? Um, I did pick two talents. Um, I guess, uh, are we going through our skills? I didn't know what the order that we were doing. Oh, I don't think it matters. Okay. I think that we just, we do whatever we want because it's our show. <laughs> F, 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 F. <laughs> no, Get a structure. No. Get a structure. It. It's been no. years. Uh, so <laughs> the skills that I picked were medicine, uh, which is at one, vigilance at one, uh, arcana at two, uh, leadership at one, negotiation at one. Uh, knowledge adventuring also at one and star watching at one. Uh, then the talents that I grabbed are clever retort, uh, which allows me to grant someone uh, two threats in a conversation. So I can sort of stress people out and needle them uh, through my words Mm. and then rapid reaction, which allows me to spend strain, uh, which is one of the derived stats that we'll, I guess, talk about in a second. Um, strain to uh, add successes to any uh, cool or vigilance check. Nice. Yeah, do we want to talk about derived stats? Let's do it. My favorite thing in role-playing games. (laughs) Uh, So, the derived stats in this game are wounds, strain, your soak value, and your defense. Um, 
your wounds are your your meat, your like actual hit points. Your strain mm. is uh, the mental and physical stress that you can go through. So in a fight, uh, you might be able to take a lot of uh, damage as strain where you're dodging attacks. Uh, you're not actually suffering lethal damage. Um, but you can also take strain in conversations with people. Uh, Genesis is one of the few games that can make social combat kind of an interesting thing uh, mm -hmm. where you can go in a conversation and actually suffer stress during that conversation that can affect you down the road. Or, you know, you can have a duel of wits with someone uh, where your hit points, quote unquote, are your strain. Um your soak value is based on your brawn and it's how much you reduce any incoming damage. And defense is actually really based on uh, your armor. Okay. Very cool. So based on that, I have 11 wounds, 13 strain, one soak. Hmm. I have 13 wounds, 11 strain, and three soak. Ooh, you're beefy. I am. Like I said, I'm the tank. Yeah. And then Perry allows me to like deflect damage against me like once per hit or something like that nice yeah it's a it's a really useful talent yeah absolutely now what do we do yeah uh, we've made characters we have to name them yep we do have to name our characters oh that's the hard part yeah it's not the easiest part i have the book oh you got your special like million names book um, is, there, is there any 50,000 plus baby names? Well, that's close to a million. The plus really gets <laughs> sure. you there. Right. Um, is there any good names for fallen angels in there? Uh, <laughs> you know, there's not a section for that, uh -huh. but we can probably come up with something. That's unfortunate. Or we can just roll randomly and go to that page number. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to deal with that. No. <laughs> I'll roll 1d1000. No thanks. Ah. Oh. Hold on. I think I want to look up something real quick. Um, well, I guess, Ryan, do you have a gender for your character? Um, I'm thinking, like, uh, let's see here. Because I really like the name Ezra. Okay. Mm. Um, which means both helper and strong. Mm. And I think that that's a good name for you. That is a good name. I will contemplate that. Okay. Uh, I am using the naming convention that was outlined by Mendez in uh, the document that they created uh, as a freelance, uh, which usually combines a title with uh, a classic uh, Chinese surname. Uh, so I went with Old Song. Mm, that's very fitting. Old Song, the Wandering Ghost. Mm-hmm. What's a good, there's no list in here for good necromancer names. I don't know why I'm putting so much thought into this. Because we always do. Because it matters. All right. Um, my character's name is Ezra Fallenstar. I like it. Oh, subtle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they are um, kind of like a, a demi-gendered... Um, like woman presenting character. I haven't created a gemi gendered character yet. So uh, true. she, they pronouns. Excellent. And they are not uh, extremely subtle, uh, especially when it comes to sword play. Very cool. I just want to pick like a really like hoity toity name. I think we're going to go with Eudora Atherton. Ooh. It's a name and it's a choice that I made. <laughs> Okay, I got to write these down before I forget them. Uh, was it Fedora Afferton? Eudora. Oh, Eudora. <laughs> no, I did make a character named Fedora at one point, <laughs> but that was on a that was on a different show. Uh -huh. No, you 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 also cre recreated them for um one of our episodes, I believe. Mm, possibly. Yeah, I think so. Wouldn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. Athena Fedora was her name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Age? Question mark. What if she doesn't know? That checks out. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the age 36. That sounds like a good age. It is a good age. I haven't been there yet, but I'll let you know in a few years. Um, I'm going to say question mark, but she looks to be in her mid-20s. Five foot ten. James, did you pick a name? 
Uh, yeah, Are old you still song. Thinking about it. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. I was assuming we would just make up all this other like stuff, like build hair, eyes, all that sort of stuff. Whatever your heart desires. Uh-huh. I think we did it. Yeah, it seems like these characters are pretty well created. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a motivation the- section on here. Oh, yes. Do we want to go through that? Your strength, flaw, desire, fear. Uh, so that's not something that we ever really use uh, in, yeah. in terms of how we play the game. But mm-hmm. uh, if, if you all wanted to jump into that, I would not be able to guide you on it because, like I said, mm-hmm. we don't use it. Ryan, do you want to save that for our fanfic section? Ooh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Cool. And then do All we right, want to do we want to save the how we got together for our fanfic section as well? Yeah, I think so. That sounds like a really interesting discussion with this uh, this I'm cast of characters. It. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we created characters. We did Wonderful. it. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for playing with me on this. Uh, th- these characters are certainly very interesting, per- perhaps world breakingly. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. Uh huh. Well, James, thank you so much for joining us for our character creation episodes. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, If folks like Skyjacks, they liked some of the concepts that we discussed here, I want everyone to know that right now, uh, Skyjacks Courier's Call, our all-ages take on the Skyjacks universe, is currently kickstarting a full season of episodes. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Courier's Call, you you can subscribe to it. It's on its own feed now. Uh, And this week, we're going to be launching that Kickstarter, uh, trying to put the funds together so that we can produce a full season of it. Uh, I am very, very excited about that. Uh, there it's so wonderful. My kids love that show too. Like Nate has been waiting and waiting and waiting for more episodes. <laughs> if, if you've got young ones at home, uh, it is great. And we are posting new episodes during the Kickstarter campaign itself. So, um, nice. be sure to check it out. Uh, there are five episodes right now, but, uh, we're going to have more, uh, very soon. Very cool. All right, James. Uh, well, can you remind the people then where they can find you online? Yes. If you would like to find me and my various works, you can find most of it at oneshotpodcast.com. Uh, there you will be able to find One Shot, um, which is my primary show, and Campaign, which we've been talking a lot about Campaign. Uh, so check that <laughs> out there. Um, you can also find pretty much everything that I publish uh, anywhere books are sold. Uh, just if you've got a favorite retailer, uh, you can ask them for books by James D'Amato. I have the Ultimate RPG Character Backstory Guide, the Ultimate RPG Gameplay Guide, and coming soon, the Ultimate Micro RPG Book, uh, which is an anthology of 40 different games designed by some of my favorite and some of the most talented game designers working today. Uh, finally, if you want to talk to me directly because you have questions or comments, you can uh, find me at one shot rpg on twitter well thank you james and thank you to everyone for listening and join us in the next episode for our discussion block character creation cast is a production of the one shot podcast network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast, or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at LordNeptune, or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us.
And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the OneShot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Asians Represent. Asians Represent celebrates Asian creators and diversity in the gaming community. Join hosts Agatha Chain and Daniel Kwan as they discuss gaming, genre, and representation with their guests, and occasionally argue with each other to the sound of Agatha's beloved Airhorn app.